Yeah, Roger Rave here. I guess it's got to be uh, Roger Rave at Day at the Beach. Roger Rave at Day at the Beach. So yeah, you can get it. Uh, really high on this meditation on the beach. Beach meditation. Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna talk about is this some uh, breathing exercises. Oh, I guess so what we were talking about is like there are some vests and stuff. Some vests and some shirts. I saw a thing that said, and this is like a, what a punk looks like today. And I'm going, well, that's what I was doing my yoga. I ride your rave. You know? I was on some sort of job interview. And I don't know what she observed or whatever. She thought, what is this, some sort of a joke or something? I would like to think that my call center representatives are superheroes. You know what I mean? And uh, that was one of my uh, entrance statements on my interview where I was last dead. I was, I was doing real good over there. In fact, I was doing great. Yeah, there we go, actually. Trying to figure out something with the light here. Kind of got a few little things kind of fixed up for the light. Kind of took it a, few, a little of that out. I do it kind of, you know, it's not exactly a motor where they got the spotlights. <laughs> you know, they got the spotlights and the, and the uh, strobe lights, you know, and all the black lights, you know, and all the Christmas lights, you know. It's got all the trees and the mannequins and all that stuff. So. But yeah, a day at the beach, you know, some meditation. You get really high on beach meditation. You know, at each breath, as the waves come in, and as the waves go out, the waves go out this way, the, uh, what they call it, I, I used to really trip out on that. It's a really trippy sensation, all the sand underneath your feet starts going out to, you know, uh, what do they call that? The breakwater? The uh, undertow. Watch out for strong undertow, you can get drowned if it's really bad at the beach. One of the guys uh, from Russia was an expert swimmer. He, uh, he drowned in the Ganges when I was out there in my in uh, 2010. I'm really, really sorry to hear that he was an expert swimmer. The, uh, I guess the uh, currents in the Ganges are just so strong. You know, only the expert uh, yogis there, probably the ones that are 700 years old, know the currents, know the path. Papa was talking about the yogis, they dip down in the river in one location, and you know, like in the Jamuna, dip down in Jamuna, and come up somewhere in the Ganges, somewhere else, hundreds of miles away. <laughs> in an instant, yogi travel. <laughs> They know how to travel it. Well, they know the currents. Not only that, but they do it at supersonic speed of the mind. You know, and there's a lot of rocks in the Ganges and river and stuff too. So, yeah, the undertow. So when the waves come in, I let the waves come over and splash. And then when the undertow and the waves and the water go out, Go forward and allow a break. Is that the break? What they call when the wave gets all the water down from the end show? It comes up and comes over.
Well, I can just smell that salt water. It's like I really can. I can smell the salt water. Send you here a, a day at the beach. You get really high on beach meditation. Meditation at the beach. We got waterfalls, waterfall in a river. And some of the exercises are, uh, you know, imagine, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, you know where it's at. Yeah, good twist. Good twist that way, maybe good twist this way. Oh. Yeah, you gotta keep your eye out for some bikini bottoms. <laughs> And I'm not talking about a good sale somewhere. <laughs> but don't worry, this video, they don't come back. Actually, some surfers come by and their surfboard and stuff towards the summer, towards the middle of the end of the video. A guy just came by with his dog, just walking his dog. Picking up his dog. The dog comes by. From what I was saying, in America, everybody, they, they have a dog. So why not Krishna having so many cows? I thought I would show him a picture of Krishna and go, that's not God. Krishna's with the cows. And, you know, there's these, uh, you know, these Indian women, you know, with uh, rings in their nose, you know, their nose jewelry and stuff, you know, earrings. And he's blue. And he's with some cows. You know, and they go, that's not God. You know, they want to laugh. <laughs> that's not God. We're gonna try to pull my leg here. What's this? Some sort of joke? So like, yeah, Diver, he was always saying, and he would even say this too. I was in his box program. We go to the beach. We show people these pictures. They go, that's not good. No, well, then show us God there. What this guy look like? Who is God there? If you say that this is not God, then you would have to be able to show me and tell me who God is. Then. You know, yeah. That cow we went to. Yeah. Dog religion. <laughs> dog religion. Why not Krishna having so many dogs? When I was in India, there's all the dogs and the cows and the monkeys. Oh, in fact, this is what they're enjoying. The dogs were licking the plates. You know, we would eat and we have these plates and you throw them all in a pile. Later, you know, they either burn them or they go in the river. You know, they, they do something natural with them, kind of just bury them. You know, use it for compost. But the, uh, the dogs come over. And the dogs licked the plates, and the monkeys were all sitting around, so there's enough monkeys to chase the dogs off. And then the cows come and chase the dogs off, and the cows lick the plates. So everybody gets their turn. <laughs> they say the dogs, the cows, and the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. I brought back a souvenir, a monkey bite on my uh, glasses. Monkey bones, monkey bite. I like that movie, monkey bones. Yeah, I guess it's another thing. Monkey Bones, the guy, he goes into a coma. He goes into like some sort of bardo or afterlife kind of place thing. Yeah, where the dreams are... He, oh, he's a dream of the stars because of this crazy nightmares that he has. Oh, 
Yeah. Has anything that happened to you? Describing the afterlife states being a type of a dream type of state in your subtle body. You know, a type of a dream state. Subtle body. Ron Bass was saying, you know, there's the welcoming committee. You know, a lot of people have explained them as being their, uh, uh, being their, uh, well, their family members, you know, or the Ishta Dave, you know, their spiritual leaders. You know, they're, they're describing a, a, a very beautiful light, a, a white light, very, very beautiful white light. But it's as bright as 10,000 suns. So, you know, a lot of people are afraid of that. They don't know exactly where it is. Or you, you hear, go towards the light, go towards the light. A lot of people came back from past all life uh, experiences or uh, near death experiences. They say, I had the most beautiful vision. There's the most beautiful white light. I saw my family members, my mother, my father. I think some of them even actually said that they, you know, have spoken with their Easter day. You know, there's a nice meditation practice. You know, a nice place, uh, you know, like a, a courtyard, a garden, a river, a waterfall, a beach. You know, and imagine yourself, you know, meeting your Easter day. You know, and having a spiritual conversation, you know, with your Easter days. You know, we're uncertain about where we're going. You know, not exactly sure about just what exactly just happened. Or where we're actually really coming from, or where we're going, where our destinations are, where desires for fullness, or needs, or wants, or situations, circumstances, the other person, people that are involved in our lives, directly and indirectly. You know, a complete, total, global and universal environment, and you have your immediate environment. You know, nowadays, you know, when I grew up, you know, this is what we were talking about, that my mom and dad, they sure had a lot to say at the top of their lungs, both at the same time. The other one wasn't listening. Yeah, that's a frustrating thing. My relationships, you know, well, she was a drug addict. She was completely, you know, off a rocker. But when you're talking about trying to, trying to say something to somebody, you're trying to tell somebody what, you know, what we're doing, what the deal is, you're going against our agreements, our agreement was this. And you got somebody that's not even listening. They're not even listening. They think what they have to say is important, which was all complete nonsense. They're talking, they're only not listening, so you're both talking at the same time. So that's actually, that's actually some sort of bad karma, actually. You know, my uh, parents, you know, they, they got divorced, you know. You know, they, they did the same thing, you know, my dad, my stepmom, you know, my mom and my stepdads, you know. They did the same thing. They were arguing, they were yelling, screaming. They weren't making any sense. Things were good when I was good. You know, I got to Disneyland, I had a bicycle, we had horses, we had goats, we had the chickens. I raised Freddy, you know, I said, I had my friends, we went places, you know, went to Magic Mountain, you know, push cars, you know, I had bike, go on bike rides, you know, I had music, my tapes, uh, some headphones, you got the headphones, listen to my headphones, you know, that's the thing, you know, it's like, you got the stuff, it's all, uh, you know, a whole bunch of trips to go along with it, you know, like the kid that got all mad because I was doing the spirograph. And he got, oh man, he said I broke it, he grabbed the things, he broke the rings. He, I, he, he just, uh, well, he was obviously envious, but the thing is, I was an older kid than he was. I was in the fifth grade, he was only in the second or third grade. He was a real brat. Instead of asking, he's like, oh, that's kind of neat, let me do that too. You know what I mean? Like the way kids would play together. He just, he just wanted to destroy the whole thing. He said, I broke it, uh, you know, I'm not doing it right. You know, I mean, he was, he was hysterical. A hysterical little monster, you know. I know I wasn't thinking of it, just did the things that I do, you know. Get the little wheels and go around on the inside, then pick up a couple more wheels, go around on the inside. Do the same thing with a few wheels around the outside, you know, then start coloring them in alternatively, you know. <coughs> 
don't know. I was, I was just doing it just to do it. I wasn't trying to show anybody up or whatever. But I guess, I guess that's the thing. And I guess that goes in the personal relationships. It goes in the business relationships. You know, here's a guy here. You know, I really don't, you know, care about financing a car or a vehicle. I don't really need one. But what's everybody all pissed off about? Is that they're trapped in these, uh, this financial contract that they signed. That they can't get out of it. That they've got to finish it. They're going to come and get the car. So it's not so much as coming and get the car or coming and getting the house. It goes on your credit report. Right? And when, so what does that affect? That affects... Well, you know, like the guy's car, uh, the guy's uh, credit on his car, you know, or credit on whatever, credit on the house. He can't, he can't get a house loan. You know, he can't get a loan for a house, can't get a loan for a car. You know, he can't get a loan for anything, something's on it. Uh, but they want to see your credit report. Where's credit report? How, who do you owe? How long did it take for you? Like, you know, it's like, well, you know, American debt, everybody's all uptight, pissed off got a completely clean criminal record. It's not even a parking ticket on there. But I said, of course, the guy rides the bus. There's no traffic tickets on there. You know, there I, I was getting some tickets on my bike, you know, a few years ago. You know, when uh, some sort of investigation. Some, some sort of thing. You know, but I, I don't know when, uh, I guess when security or some guy that comes walking around, kind of kept reminding me of the, uh, the agent in the Matrix. You know, it kind of looked something a little more like Conan O'Doyle or one of those uh, talk show host guys on TV, rather than it looked like you know the you know the, the guy on uh, you know, Ash Kind of Matrix. But but you can tell. I mean, it was like uh, uh, like an agent, you know, like an an agent, you know, coming off of weird places all of a sudden, stopping off of the bus, and the bus stop. Was he going on the bus stop? Oh, I thought maybe he was just going to work. But then he's walking around in the back, you know. He's kind of in the elevators. He's in the hallways, <laughs> you know. Doesn't know what to be correct with. But he sure looked like he was like, uh, I don't know, authoritative type of a walk in a hurry, kind of making a point or statement that he's there. Uh, so maybe the matrix is real. Who knows? There, who knows if you might know the difference? You know, I guess what, uh, you know, if Krishna and Vishnu is in each and every atom, and if there's a whole bunch of pottery stuff floating around in the air, that's atoms too, you know. But if those atoms are communicating with atoms, there's some sort of wireless communication system they got set up, you know. But that's cool, they're Krishna and Vishnu too, so. Yeah, I just hope I don't jam your airways with a really nice picture of Krishna until like the one I got from the Dhamma. Yeah, or Vishnu. Traveling into the atom and all the universe is safe between. Traveling out into the bathroom of the universe, the edge of the universe, the speed of mind. Yo, Brahma Loka. Uh, Hari Dham. The Lord of Hari, Shiva Dham, Rudra Dham. Tapavana, Jnana Loka, uh, <laughs> Jnana Loka, Tapavana Loka, the uh, the heavenly planets, the uh, hellish planets, yeah. Lord Seishanaga's got millions and millions of mouths, and he's glorified his big personality, Gaia, with Vedic hymns and pastimes, and never comes to an end and never repeats himself. <laughs> That's awesome. Roger Ray, Roger at the Beach. I don't know, what else do you do at the beach? You have a picnic? I made some nut bread. Some banana nut bread. I made my own, um, you gotta see this. I made my own flour tortillas and my own tostadas. You gotta see this. Yeah, yeah that's where you talk to Indra stole the horses at the uh, sacrificial fire. Dressed in, uh, dressed in the orange garbs of the Sinasi and the commentary. And that was the beginning of the cheating, uh, the cheating of religion. <laughs> the beginning of cheating. 
is uh, in the garb of a sannyasi or a brahmachari. He's cheating and not actually following the religious principles and stealing the horses. Stealing the horses at the sacrificial fire. He was, uh, he was trying to get uh, Priti Maharaj to uh, not be able to complete uh, the 104 horse horse uh, sacrifices. Das Padetas. Yeah. We're talking about like a 57 year old guy who's like really, really healthy. I know. I don't know what the, what a sort of a laughing matter that is. You know why you have to talk to me like I'm stupid or something. I don't know what I'm talking about or something. You're going to tell me, well, I don't know how you got this far, but you're really not going to make it here. You know? Now I have no idea how you made it anywhere or how you're even getting along now anywhere else. It's like, what the hell is that? What are, you, what are you saying something like that for? You know what I mean? Just, you know, you can't do just whatever you want to do. You know, you can do whatever you want to do, sure. But you're not going to end up with being a really, really healthy guy like me. You know, at the age of 57. You know, but I guess that's going to be a long way from now. And probably not even going to reach to be the age of 57. So probably it just doesn't matter. I guess. You know, I don't understand a lot of that. And I'm certainly not stupid. I'm a total sub-genius. Sometimes I'm afraid it's going so fast I can't catch up to me. So I'm already on the other thing. I already quite vocalized and communicated where I was supposed to. So that's a problem. Uh, I guess a little bit of hyperactivity. So yeah, I, I want to show you this stuff. So it's a lot of Yeah, now check this out. This is awesome. This is like some total awesomeness stuff. This tostada is amazing. Chapatis and stuff, you know, we made a chapatis. So, you know, home or, homemade tortilla, it's just like a chapati. So I made the tortilla dough, it was uh, really easy, you know, instead of putting it in the pan and cooking it first, I just actually really took the dough, you know, and uh, put in the oil and the uh, tostada, tostada former. There was a set of four, set of four beans. You know, and I made chili beans. So I put the chili beans in there. I got some cilantro on there. So this homemade tortilla, my homemade chili beans. You know, I, I get a lot better if I just get the beans in bulk and soak them. You know, the canned beans. Uh, you know, for the same price that I get a bag of beans, you know, the same price for the canned beans. And the bag of beans will last about four. It's about four cups, you know, if I soak a cup or three quarters of a cup, when I soak the beans and make the beans, I can get about four, four, uh, you know, four servings of beans. I, mean, I, I like to use the garbanzo beans. Um, I like to get the kidney beans, the black beans. Oh, you got to have pinto beans. You know, I make chili and carne. I made enchiladas. Um, you know, I, I make these great tacos, these taco quesadillas. Yeah, so I guess that's what we want to talk about. Down here, you know, Roger Ray, getting a little more hair, hair on the top. You know, kind of comes up, kind of goes over on uh, everything, you know. 
Boston. You know, that there, you know, kind of doesn't really well. Talk about like the Brahma root room, everything goes like this, you know, so, you know, I think it kind of does that too. <laughs> I don't know, where they, where they like the, uh, so much with the long faces. <laughs> it's just that I got a long forehead. I got a long face. What's with all the long faces? Guess, that's just the way I look. I don't know. <laughs> that's right. Well, what were we talking about? The observed and the observer? Yeah, and that was the thing. You know, observing yourself observed. You know, being conscious. You know, it's not fighting with your thoughts. You know, if your thoughts uh, have this uh, tendency to, you know, to, to kind of, you know, ramble on and to think on, you know, the thoughts, you know, are coming and going, coming and going like the waves of the ocean, coming and going like the river and the water in the river, you know, or the, uh, the leaves and twigs that flow at the bottom of the river. You know, the clouds in the sky, you know, the experience of mass, expanse of sky. You know, and the clouds that go by, you know, the sun, the moon, stay stationary. Like this verse is a Srimad Bhagavatam about that, I believe it's in the 10th canon of Krishna book, 10th canon of Srimad Bhagavatam, whereby the material nature is in motion. And then in just the way that the clouds are moving across the moon on a full moon night, the moon appears to be moving, yet the station is still. I'm quite sure you've had that experience of seeing that before, when the clouds are moving quickly across the sky on a cloudy full moon night. The moon actually looks like it's moving, you know, but it's stationary, it's still, it's, it's not going anywhere. So that in the same aspect, the self or the soul, without, I guess that's another thing, don't you know, keep your hands away from your face. Keep your hands away from your face. <laughs> I guess it's some sort of body language or something. It's like, what's with this guy? He's either not informed or some sort of a nervous sort of a twitch or thing. It's like, huh? <laughs> I like that was the interview. The guy was like, and all the dudes and the don'ts, they're going, huh? But I think they're really exaggerating stuff. Like, they go, you know, they know you want the job. You're there to convince them you want the job. They know you want the job, that's why you're there in the first place. You know, in today's society, they be kind of, boy, you really want that job, you know? You know, I want to be taking a walk and a hike and stuff, you know, you're trying to hold stuff together, you know? I don't hate that. When you gotta get a job? When you gotta get a job? I just know it's gone, man. I'm stuck. I can't go in there. I got somebody going, when you gotta get a job? When you gotta go to work? When you gotta, yeah. It's like, fuck. Can't you make like the best of things at least? You know, why you're driving me crazy, man? By the time I go talk to somebody, I'm not gonna to wanna to talk to them. I'm gonna just wanna go, why don't you give me a job? Why don't you give me a job? This and that. You know, it's like, hey, come on, man. These aren't handouts. You know, these aren't handouts over here. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not asking for a handout. You know what I mean? I'm trying to convince the hiring manager that I'm like, you know, a pretty good guy for the job. And they say, you know, training people isn't everybody's favorite thing to do. You got some sort of idiot that's just not going to do it right. You're going to have to show him a hundred million times how to get it right. So he finally gets it right. It's like, when are you going to be able to do your job when you know that everybody's doing their job? It's like, well, how come they got rid of everybody when they were doing their job? Just all of a sudden, somebody's got a hair up their ass about something or somebody or shit, you know, and pulling out all this crap and stuff. See, that's the thing. That's all this stuff that the stuff is around, but you're not really supposed to enjoy it because everybody else thinks they should have it or you shouldn't have it or this thing or that thing or the other thing. And it's like, well, what'd you even get for me for Christmas for? You just take the batteries out and you say I never use it. It's like, what? You know, I mean, you know, it's just like, who knows? I don't know. Anyways, yeah. A day at the beach. I'm not gonna worry about it. I should do some painting, but I don't know when I'm working, looking for a job and trying to get a job. I'm not doing any painting. 
you know, it's like, I don't know, they're, what are you doing painting for? You know, are you getting paid for this painting? Did you get paid for this painting? Yeah, you know, I was like, what? It's really just a hobby. I haven't even go, been going out and seeing my friends. I've just been so busy with this thing. You know, and you got all the awards and stuff, you know. The certificates. The certificates, the certificates of training. You got gift certificates. I still got a $10 Amazon card. I had a $25 card from Target. You know, you got the calendars, got the certificate of training. You know, caught in the act, caught in the act cash. <laughs> caught in the act. Guess what I'm learning good work for me. See, there I am right there. So yeah, it's doing great, you know. So they got the, uh, you know, they, they, they got the tools, they got the good stuff. You know. Nobody wants to hear, so what you do at so-and-so? Confidential. Nobody wants to hear that. What do you mean you can't tell me what you do over there? It's like, I don't know, I think most of the people that are interviewed with had a home woven with Countrywide, you know. Most people I'm talking about financed their damn car through this rinky tink ass company that got sued by the government. It's trying to change stuff all over the place. Got G-men walking around all over. Stepping off of the bus, I thought it was going to work or something. What the hell is the G-man security guy doing getting off the bus? Where'd he get on the bus? He had to get on it somewhere. Somewhere at the next stop or the stop over or something coming that way in that direction. So what's he doing? How did he know I would be there when the bus got there at that specific time? I mean, you know, you would think that they were watching, but it doesn't seem like they are. But it sure was quite a coincidence. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who knows? And in a company where you got a bunch of G-men walking around, you got a whole bunch of people belittling, belittling people and talking to people like they're stupid or something. I don't get it. Maybe they want to close the place down. You know? I don't know. Give away free money. <laughs> Who knows? But well, yeah, that's the thing. Everybody's hooked up. And some, you know, it's like, well, this guy here, he hasn't even got a traffic ticket. He's not going to court and paying any fines. He doesn't have any bills he has to pay that he's hooked up into. He's not wrecked his credit. <laughs> oh, man. Who I went to school, I heard not. I guess I would like to have all those things. But today's society, you know, who knows? It's just so uncertain. You know, I'm just trying to get through this thing with, you know, the minimal, minimum amount of bumps and dents and run-ins and head-on collisions. <laughs> Who knows what do you call this thing? The rockets across the sky? That's what I think. I, whatever it was uh, that I did in my last life, it had to be pretty bad. Born on a planet that's threatening to blow itself up at any minute in my whole damn entire life. You know, and it's not me. How can I single myself out on this? It's, it's not just me. It's everybody on the planet. How can I be singled out and isolated on this thing? They're not just trying to blow me up or no along with the environment. You know, I mean, how did I get into this thing? You know, they don't even know who I am. You know, you wouldn't even know who the people were of the millions that just got shot out of the sky. <laughs> you know, I mean, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, yeah, Roger Ray the D at the beach. Uh, I really like that income. Oh, here it comes. Yeah, it's, uh, and the tone, the outgoing. There it comes. Get really high on the beach, right? Okay, Roger Ray, what, what do you have for that, Jim? 